Human pigmentation is regulated by a large number of genes and you can view each of them as a dimmer switch. You can turn each one up or down as you want and we have different, each of us has different variants of the, each of those genes. And this gene is one of the big di dimmer switches. And so in the zebrafish it so happens that dimmer switch is turned all the way off and in humans it's turned largely off. So this was a very interesting experiment. We had found the great similarity in sequence between uh, the human and the zebrafish gene. They're both about 500 amino acids and they're identical in about 70% of their amino acids. So we asked whether the human gene could function in the zebrafish and indeed it did. When you inject the mutant zebrafish with the human gene, some of the pigment cells that, sh that would have been lighter in color in the zebrafish normally became darker, which meant that the human gene could provide the function that the missing zebrafish gene uh, could not. Believe it or not, the magic moment, the eureka moment came when I got back the electron micrographs, the high power microscopy of the zebrafish uh, mutant and the, and the uh, normal fish, that I saw the difference in number, size, and density of the pigment packets. I had learned in school that the same change applied to humans of lighter versus darker skin. And that, at that moment I realized we had something in this mutant zebrafish that would someday relate to human beings. We all have this gene, okay? It's, it, this is not a situation where one group of people is missing the gene and another one has it. Uh, it, has it. Uh, we all have the gene and we just have different variations on it. And which variation of the gene determines and how strongly that gene acts. It's just changing one little part out of 500 some parts of this gene. What other people have shown for sure is that we need to get vitamin D and that has to be generated by UV light from the sun. And so if you live in the, near the equator and there's a lot of sun, if you have dark skin, you can still get enough vitamin D. But if you live up north and you're darker skin, you're not able to make enough vitamin D to prevent you from getting, um, getting rickets which can be fatal. One of the features of cancer is that they are like the Borg. You attack them with something and they change on you. They adapt. So I was trying to understand how cancer cells adapt. So in order to do that, I needed some signal from, from the organism for how mutations occur. Since animals aren't built with light bulbs, we needed a genetic light bulb to tell us when mutation was occurring and we used this gene actually in zebrafish as our genetic light bulb for our tests. So therefore I needed to clone this gene, I needed to find what the gene was in order to understand my mutants that I had generated, which in fact are more susceptible to cancer. They change more, they're more like the Borg, and in fact they get more cancer. So I needed to know what this target gene was so that I could study what the changes were that were happening in these Borg fish. Um, so unexpectedly, the gene itself turned out to be interesting, and hence the story. The applications that this discovery might have in cancer research uh, include, uh, for example, adding another gene to the toolbox of people trying to develop immunotherapy, ways to, it for, to make our immune system attack our cancer cells. And alternatively, um, we also might be able to use the knowledge of this gene and its mechanisms that we find someday to modify skin color in ways that are safer than we currently use. For example, people with light skin like to make their skin darker using tanning salons, and that UV light is actually a contributor to cancer. So it would be much better if uh, uh, people had available to them some other means of darkening their skin than something that causes cancer.